question is, do you agree that Scotland should be an independent country? For me, the principle that we work best when we work together. Well, he didn't. Very serious. The referendum. It seems to me that they're not dealing with the issues. Hello, this is Scottish Independence Podcast number 89, and this time I spoke to David Mitchell. David has started a new website called Our Scotland, but that's Our H-O-U-R Scotland. And that site is 60 minutes to hear the case for an independent Scotland. No politicians, just people who care. We had a little chat about his site and about the aims of it and the inspiration behind it and about more indie ref issues in general. So we'll just go straight to the conversation and I'll have a wee word with you at the end. Hope you enjoy. Hi David, how's it going? Yeah, really well, thanks. Just padding about my flat the morning after the second debate, um, which I was watching last night and we watching again this morning. So very impressed with that. Are you taking the BBC's uh, view that it was a score draw or did you feel slightly differently about it? I didn't actually see that the BBC had actually tried to declare that a score draw, but no, it definitely wasn't. It was a, it was a comprehensive victory, I thought, for Alex Salmond and the Yes campaign as a, as a greater movement, I guess. Do you think it's going to have a real effect on the polls going down going down the line? I mean, I don't mean just on who won the debate, but on how the vote's going to turn out. Well, they, I mean, people are still saying they're undecided in the polls. And when people are telling you that, then you have to wonder what are the things at this stage that are going to influence them. If they've not made up their mind based on the information that's floating about already, um, assumedly they are waiting for something else. And I think these debates were quite marquee moments within the campaign. So you have to assume that some of these undecided people are making their minds up based on that. Um, so fingers crossed, fingers crossed that um, some undecided were pushed towards the yes as a result of last night. Do you think that some of the best stuff actually came from the audience? You know, um, there was the woman that said, uh, you know, I hope you feel Nye Bevan sitting on your shoulder. And then there was the other one that said, uh, the guy that said, uh, if we're better together, why aren't we better together already? Which I thought was quite good. Well, I mean, that is, that is a really good question, and you do hear it crop up, and I think you're probably right. Within that little run of questions, there were about four people in a row who really put Darling on the spot, which you hadn't really seen before. And I think across the way, there was definitely just a, a turning of the tide. You heard everyone groaning when uh, Alistair Darling, you know, wouldn't let go of the currency issue or really hark back to that a lot. So I definitely think there was a shift within the audience and I think that energy probably does come through to people on the television and I think it buoyed Salmon and really got him into stride, which in turn was cyclical, you know, that he, when he saw the audience responding, confidence would have came and he was a bit more bombastic. So, yeah, I think the audience definitely did play a part and I felt that the comments coming from them and the question was certainly, um, I wouldn't say that the first debate it was weighted towards the No campaign, but I certainly felt the audience gave Salmon a a hard time in the first one in this second debate I, I did feel that it was people slowly starting to sort of pick apart and uh, do a wee bit more in favour of the yes in the no campaign just to put my conspiracy theorist hat on for a second do you think that someone at the bbc is getting hauled over the coals this morning for not screening the questions well enough i mean it's hard to say you don't really know what the sort of internal policy of that is you know i'm, I'm sure if you were to ask the official line would be you know it's equally weighted you know, the audience members, but yeah, who, who knows really, I mean, that's kind of a, almost like a rabbit hole. Some of the stuff I've seen from the BBC has been quite remarkable in terms of the coverage they've given um, and the spin they've put on things, so anything's possible, I would say, that's probably the, the fairest way of putting it. Yeah. Uh, so, um, to come to yourself, because the reason I decided to ask you on the podcast was, um, it's related to something you've already said, because you talked about people who've not looked at the information. And you've started the website OurScotland.org. Um, would you like to explain what it is and why you decided to start it? Yeah, sure. Um, I started the project um, one weekend, I think it was around May of uh, this year. Every time a poll had come out, there was a huge undecided chunk. And I was, I was kind of thinking to myself, if you haven't decided yet... What is the thing that's going to tip you over? You must really be struggling, or you must really either be really wrestling with the issues, or you've just not engaged with the issues. It's, it's got to be one of the two. Um, it, it was just very hard for me to imagine people 
sitting down, looking through the arguments and not have a feeling one way or the other. So I was kind of almost a little bit puzzled by this huge undecided chunk. And obviously I wanted to do something that would bring them towards the yes side and a yes vote. But by the same token, I was very keen not to do something that was just blitzing people with information or stats or figures. And so that was sort of, that was jogging around in my head. And it was around the same time that the Philippa Whitford video that she did last year, talking about the NHS, that was sort of uh, coming to the fore and a lot of people were sharing it. And I watched that video and I thought to myself, if you're undecided and then you've seen that person speak with like such passion and such, imp you know, she was an impartial figure and she just came across as knowing exactly what she was talking about and there was no way you could come away from that thinking that is just rhetoric or that's just her trying to be persuasive. It, it, immediately you could tell that to someone who knows what they're talking about, has a genuine concern and really does feel that a yes vote is imperative. And I thought, if you were undecided and you saw that, there's no way you could help but be swayed by it. So mm -hmm. then I kind of got to thinking that if undecided people had access to that video and others like it, and particularly one of the main elements in our Scotland is that we don't use speeches from politicians or people who are very strongly politically affiliated, former politicians, things like that. Because I think there's plenty of that. If you want to make your decision based on that, there's a whole raft of speeches and information and sound bites that you can listen to. But I thought if I can get more videos like Philippa Whitford, just ordinary people speaking from the heart, speaking authoritatively, then that is probably a way of convincing a certain demographic of voters who are turned off by the politics but want to engage and want to make a decision. Mm -hmm. So then it truly really became a case of tracking down similar videos, building the site and kind of trying to let people know that the site was there and sort of building a social media presence. And the main thing I wanted to do at that stage, once the site was built, was really try to persuade people who were already a solid yes to reach out to the people on their own social media and try to use this as a tool for undecided people. Yeah. And sort of say, like, I'm not going to bombard you with information. All I'm going to do is ask you to spend one hour watching this, watching these videos, and then make your mind up from there. You know, either if, if you listen to this and you think it's nonsense, fair enough, at least you've made your decision. But I kind of knew myself, you, you know, the, the, the standard kind of thinking or the sort of proven thinking is the more people hear about the yes argument, the more likely they are to move towards yes. So I thought if we can get that initial engagement, get people who are who want to make a decision but are turned off by the politics, get them to spend one hour looking at this, then they can really start to think about the issues. So that was kind of the idea. And from there, we've had various little spin-off activities and stuff like that. Mm. It's it's an interesting idea to try and pitch it to the undecideds, and you know it's the one hour, just spend one hour, because you think a lot of people maybe in this referendum are reacting from the gut rather than looking at any of the information. We always hear that you know there's no information out there, but there is. There's mines of information everywhere you want to look. So I mean, why do you think that is that there's this constant refrain that you know there isn't the information out there when quite clearly there is? Why do you think that idea is being promoted? I think that you hear that a lot because what people, when they say the information's not out there, I think they're, uh, what they're really saying is there's not a uh, one paragraph, easily digestible answer that everyone agrees to um, and the yes side and the no side are, sh are nodding their heads and saying, well, actually, that's the truth. But it, as everyone knows, that's never the case in politics. You're never going to get that. But people feel like they want it. And I don't know if people think that that answer is out there and it's just been withheld from them. But obviously there is an empirical truth to, to every question, to everything that we ask about the referendum. But I think people are a little bit frustrated because they want to hear it from the politicians or they want to hear it from an eminent source that they can trust. But as, as you well know, for every source that the Yes campaign can um, put forward, you can find a contradictory one for the no side if you look hard enough, or you can find a statistic which, if you massage it enough, you can produce a counter-argument. Um, so I think that's what it is. Basically, people are saying, um, 
the problem is that there's not information out there. What they're saying is, I'm getting conflicting information, and I'm getting information which is not easily digestible. And I think, unfortunately, that is maybe as a result of people trying to engage with the referendum, but maybe not being used to following politics and not not realising that there's always this process of wading through information and looking at who's presenting the information. I mean, I, I personally think if I was... A lot of the time I try to put myself in an unsighted person's shoes to think, what would I look for? And when I was thinking about that, I came up with the idea that, you know, if, if there is a sort of gen, general distrust of politicians, then maybe undecided people would like to hear from people who were... It's difficult to say impartial, but let's say that that aren't trotting out a party line. So that's why I wanted sort of normal people in Scotland talking mm-hmm. on their Scotland website. So when I put myself in the shoes of an undecided voter, I guess it's it's this idea that the information has not been presented in the way that makes it easy for me. I, I think that is unfortunately why this, this this has been repeated over and over again. I, I saw it again. I think possibly even BBC coverage, you know, said it was uh, more heat than light. But it, yeah, in the debate, but I mean that is just that's just the nature of political debate. I don't really, I don't really see any way around it, or I don't see that changing certainly in the next few weeks. Mm. So, what sort of reaction have you been getting to the site? People tend to like it. Um, I, I've got to say, I mean, obviously, it's really the the yes voters who have grabbed onto it and have tried to use it through social media and put it under the nose of their friends. And I have had a lot of people, you know, saying, "Oh, you know." I am going to, you know, put my put this in front of my uncle or, you know, my aunt or my dad who's undecided or someone who's swithering. And um, so I get a lot of positive feedback like that. And I'll get a lot of feedback on the videos to choose. People are always suggesting, like, oh, have you seen this video? Have you seen that video? People wanting to, you know, encourage the site and uh, help me because obviously there's just so much information to sift through. So it, it's been extremely positive. Um, one thing I, I've done with the site is I've tried to market it as for undecided people, not so much uh, an out-and-out yes case. It's not the, web, the the videos on the website aren't there as a here is the definitive argument for yes, come and hear it and be convinced. I've more pitched it as here are the reasons people want to vote yes. Mm-hmm. If you, if you listen to this and after an hour you think it's nonsense and you you know you think there's, there's nothing good to be said for yes at that point then fair enough the site has operated as its intended use as a decision making process as a decision making tool the idea is if you come watch for an hour and you're interested in independence great that's what I personally think you should be doing that's the the stance I take if you come and listen for an hour then you think there's, there's nothing good to be said, then at that point, I sort of almost raise my hands up and go, okay, it sounds like maybe because of your circumstances or because of your beliefs, then maybe you, you need to be on the no path. But at least you're off this undecided chunk, which is the chunk that was causing me so much consternation and so much <laughs> moment when I was looking at the, the results. So you said there'd also been a couple of uh, spin-off events. What were they? Well, I guess the, the, the biggest one I've really done and, and the one that I felt was the, the important one was what I called the unsighted hour. So once I had the website, this idea that anyone could come along, have a wee uh, look, sit and watch for an hour was good. You know, that, that's what it was there for. Anyone could do it any time. But I figured the best way to build a bit of momentum was if we build a single point where as many undecided people as possible all committed to putting a little window within their you know, within their calendar and saying, on this day, at this time, for one hour, is the time I'm finally going to roll up my sleeves, sit down, listen to the argument, and no longer be an undecided person. So it was all about getting these people who were on the fence and saying, look, I know it's hard, I know everyone's busy, and I know wading through all this political rhetoric is tough and you don't like doing it, but if you can just spare us this one hour, not a huge amount of time in the grand scheme of how important this vote is and the effect it's going to have in generation after generation. So if you can give us this one hour now, we'll all sit down, we'll do it together, we'll get through it, we'll do it and you'll come out the other side, hopefully informed and hopefully with an idea of of what you think about Scottish independence. So we did that and that would have been the eve of the World Cup. I was very conscious of the fact that Indy Ref might take a little bit of a dip once World Cup started and obviously not for the out and out campaigners, the people who are out there 
walking around the street handing out leaflets for them. It's it's, it's not going to stop until you know the 18th, and then you know if the result doesn't go the way they want, it's it's going to continue for them afterwards. So for the people really embroiled in the campaign, it was going to stop. But I, I was concerned these undecided voters, maybe their attention wasn't as focused on the debate. Um, as the people who are strong those and strong yeses. So prior to the World Cup starting, I wanted to say, right, now's the time. You're going to roll up your sleeves, everyone, all of these undecided. Let's find everyone who's undecided in your social media. Tell them about this. And, and that's what we did. Um, and again, sort of good feedback from the back of that. You know, a few people, you know, getting in touch to say, you know, such and such is now a yes voter or I love this video. This is making me now, I was a no, now I'm thinking about a yes. So I guess that was the sort of, the main thing that we've done. So you're um, gonna have a, you're gonna have another couple of them, or it sounds like a good idea. I think we've got one more time for an undecided hour, um, and we've got all this sort of material ready. Um, so I think, yeah, I think there's gonna be one more massive push. I've not actually picked a date for that yet. As I say, I've not been around. I've, I'm actually kind of just back in the country after a couple of weeks away. So I was worried about coming back and you know, having missed something or if there was like a sea change in opinion or if the debate had swung another way, kind of be out of the loop. But I think luckily coming back just in time for the debate, I think last night's debate was, was marking the start of like maybe the final huge big push from the yes side. So I think we'll definitely get another one, another undecided or squeezed in. And, and the beauty of social media is people are so responsive on the yes side when, when I tell people about it. Immediately, they want to tell everyone else about it, so it's excellent that uh, you, you'll know yourself. This cooperation and the community online and to the S movement is like quite incredible. From like the very senior people all the way down to the people who just with the odd tweet here or there. Once they like something, they really get behind it and they really spread it far. The other thing is as well, I'm always keen to to promote this idea to better together side, but they just do not seem to have the, the take up on it. I think it's very hard to get away from this idea that it's a pro-indie site. I mean, it is and it isn't. It's pro-independence in the such that it's presenting the argument for, for yes. But by the same token, if you are undecided, it's like a signpost in the road. It's like, here's the arguments for yes. Have a listen to them. If they're not for you, that's absolutely fine. But I just want you to know what the arguments are. That yeah. I guess that's what it is. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's, you know, maybe perhaps... As a, as a commentary on the no campaign, that maybe they just prefer that people sit in that undecided column and, and bank on ignorance to some degree, rather than presenting people with ideas and then letting them make their mind up. Yeah. And, and that, that might be harsh, but that's kind of the way it, it feels, certainly from the Twitter activity. Yeah. And um, Okay, so the question I ask everyone at this point is, um, why is it that you specifically support independence for Scotland? What was it that happened? Was it over a long period of time, or was it something that seemed obvious to you, or was it a specific event? What is it that you supported? Um, it, it, it wasn't a, a very difficult decision. It was almost like the decision seemed intuitively correct. Obviously, I, I didn't really just want to go, or oh, gut feeling says yes. I've never been that, I've certainly never been a, a massive, well, I'm not a lifelong SNP supporter or anything like that, not at all. But... I think it, it just seemed intuitive. I think that as time worn on, just with increasing disillusion with the Westminster rule, independence seemed like it was a, uh, certainly the main option. And I think it would have taken something very strong to dissuade me from that. Then immediately, as you start to scratch the surface of the arguments in terms of wealth, in terms of spending, in terms of things like the NHS, it really just reinforces that. And I, I do, I do genuinely feel that the more you know about it, the harder it becomes to justify the no vote. I think to some extent everyone within the debate knows that, and I think that's why the Yes movement has had such a groundswell of ordinary people being involved with it and getting excited about it, because it's almost like they realise, to some degree, politics can be straightforward and it can be done at a local level, and you don't need to have a massive understanding to be able to engage with it. You don't need, you know, in-depth analysis going back years and years of political events and political figures. You can have a, a quick look at the landscape and be able to make a very informed judgment quite quickly. So for me, it was almost like, yes, would be the default position. I would have needed a very strong argument against voting for independence. But then the more I listened 
it became apparent that the, the yes vote was the one for me. And if I had to pick one particular thing, I guess it would be a, 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 like the social justice element, which, to be to be fair, it is kind of people mention it, but it's very much sidelined. I feel in the debate, you know, I can understand people are concerned about wealth and currency and prosperity, and the NHS is very important as well. But for me, the, the, the huge change I would want to see the sea change effectively is within spending, within taxation. I, I want to see a fairer Scotland. Um, and I think I, I see independence as the route to that. If I could hand and heart say, I could see that like a, a huge change within the United Kingdom and the Westminster like government, where someone would come to power, where the, the existing power structures would be torn apart and everything built again from the ground up then maybe I could, you know, that would be something that you could tempt me into a vote. But realistically, that that's just not going to happen. No, I, don't, I don't think we've got to hold our breath for that one. No, I mean, that's just, again, I get frustrated when people say, you know, we can have these things as, as part of the UK. And it, it comes back to that question of, if we're better, you know, the guy, the point the guy made last night, if we're better together, then why aren't we better together already? And it's because... It's a mixture of, across the UK, maybe the appetite not being there and the reins are, are just held too tightly. Whereas within an independent Scotland, we've seen a huge resurgence of the, the left within Scotland and a reuniting of the left under the Yes banner. Um, and I think that's just so important and so strong um, that this is like a huge opportunity to address some of the, the social ills within our society and try and rebalance things and really shift power back down to ordinary people and communities. Yeah, so do you think yes is going to win? Do you know, I do like to think of myself as a, as a rational person, and I, I do like to think about uh, as someone who evaluates the evidence, and I think if you were looking at this completely empirically, you would go, what does the poll say? What do the polls of polls say? And that's you know that, that tells you that if you're putting your money on a result now, you back no, but what, what's been told to us through the polls just does not seem to reflect my day-in, day-out experience of seeing people campaigning, of seeing the people that are enthused about it, about seeing... You just you just do not really meet that many ardent no-voters. You meet people who sort of shrug and go, I, I think I think it'll be a no for me. And I just can't help feel that these polls, I, I don't know if they're giving us the full, the full picture. There's obviously a waiting process involved. Has it been weighted correctly? Um, I saw a very sort of depressing stat all about how polls not only reflect what's happening, but they also then reinforce what's happening. So the more you hear that yes, aren't going to win, the less likely you are you're inclined to pick that side, and it starts to sway people. But I, I just, I just can't help but think that might be a wee surprise. Um, so I'm going to say yes. I think I think we might be having a bit of a party in the 19th. Yeah, well, here's hoping. So, um, David, thanks for coming on the podcast. That's been great. No worries at all. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. So that was David. I hope you enjoyed that. Just one more thing to say is that we're going to have lots of new podcasts out in the period between now and the referendum, even though it's coming up so fast, it's strange now. But we've got a lot of other things coming out, so keep your eyes open for new episodes because they'll be coming out at a fairly decent rate. The only other thing is that on this show, the guest chooses the tune, and this is the one that David chose. So speak to you next time. Thank you.